I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and today we're going to be talking about joining wires, specifically soldering, but we're going to touch briefly on another way of joining wires. So let's get started. Okay, so at some point you're likely going to have to join two wires back together. Whether you're putting in trailer lights or off-road lights or fixing a wire that rubbed on something or a wire that broke in, in a harness going out to a door, um, it's likely you're going to run across a time where you have to put two wires back together. Now, I've always said, and I probably will always say, that uh, soldering and heat shrinking is the preferred method for fixing a wire. Uh, there are other options, and we're going to look at one of the other options today not because I think it's the better option, but because it is very common. And if you're going to end up going that route, I'd like to show you the most correct way uh, to do it. But first focus of the video is going to be looking at how you take two wires together and you solder them correctly. Now, I'm going to admit from what I've seen, this is one of the most polarizing subjects on YouTube, apparently. I mean, there's a lot of very opinionated people on how to solder wires together. And it's a lot of the, man, that's not how I do it. And if you don't do it how I do it, man, you're wrong. Which I get to some extent. But uh, I'm going to show you how I do it, how I was taught to do it, and how I've always done it. Uh, and if you're not familiar with soldering wires, hopefully it, it you know, helps you uh, gain of under, an understanding of how to uh, do it. And if you are familiar with soldering wires, well, either you're going to like me or you're going to hate me. Uh, so let's get to it and see which it's going to be. Okay, so we've got a couple pieces of wire that we're going to be soldering together. Well, joining together. Um, these wires we're going to take and we're going to solder them together and we'll walk through the steps on how to do that. These two, closer to the end of the video, we're going to walk, uh, walk through how to do the most correct way if you have to use one of these connectors like this. Um, we'll walk through the steps to make that connection as good as possible if that's the way you end up having to go. But the preferred method, the best method to joining wires together is to solder and heat shrink. So we're going to walk through how to do that real quick. The uh, the first thing you'll have to do is you're going to have to strip the wires. Uh, wire strippers, very simply, just, you don't have to take off a ton of wire length, just strip enough that you can make a good connection, about a half inch or so. And then you're going to do the other one as well. You'll need both of them stripped on the ends. Now. You'll see a lot of people who say, you know, cross them like this and then twist them. You'll see people say, you know, put them like this and roll them. And I've, I've done both of those before, kind of. But the way I've kind of fallen into doing it, and this is just my preference, is to put them like this and get them to slide together as far as you can and then grab the joint and twist it. But before you put these together... Uh, you need to take your heat shrink, which is this heat shrink tubing that is going to seal the joint when we're all done, and you need to cut off an appropriate length of it, a uh, little bit longer, maybe twice the length of the joint that you're going to be making. And before you get started, you need to take this over the end that you have the most length behind, and slide it on first because once you know, when you're repairing these the this it's probably going to be in a wiring harness and you're not going to be able to get this on after you've already put these together and soldered them I have a wire that's just open here on the end so I can put it on afterwards but you want to remember this has to go on before you twist these together and solder them together uh, or else you'll have to cut it Put this on, re-strip and, and reset, uh, and it's just it's never good to have to go through that many steps again. So, like I said, the way I'm going to say to do this is we're going to take this and we're going to just kind of push these together. And you can see how they're just kind of 
flaring out as you push them in and then twist the joint so that you wind up with wiring that looks like that. Uh, I'm trying to get that to focus. And that is what we're going to place into our helping hands right back here and we're going to we're going to solder this. So, let's uh let's put it in the helping hands. Okay, so we've got it crimped or clipped up in our helping hands here as you can see the, the two alligator clips on this that are holding it on and we're going to turn the light on for the helping hands which just gives us a little better illumination now uh, the way we're going to go about doing this sorry for my nasty ugly tip on my soldering iron but just so you know a lot of people are going to say to come in underneath the wire, just straight underneath the wire until you can feed the solder in from the top. Meaning that they want you to just go like this and touch it from the top and once the wires are hot enough to pull the solder through that's good. And that's not bad for the people who it works for. However, I've never really had the most luck doing it that way. The method that I'm going to be showing you, uh, we're going to be taking the soldering iron still and we're going to be holding it kind of at an angle right here, creating a little like a V between the wire and the soldering iron. And we're going to set the solder right down inside there, just like that. And it's going to heat up and that's going to help hold the solder against the wire and the soldering iron uh, long enough that we can get it uh, to flow into the solder or into the wires very well. Um, but I'm just going to get the tip tinned up. Before you start soldering, the first thing you want to do is tin the tip of your soldering iron. We'll have to wait just a second because my soldering iron needs to heat up. Okay, we should be about ready here. We're going to tin the tip of the soldering iron up. Going to get some solder on it. Uh, I need to clean it off of here real quick. And then, and then we're going to walk through the, the process like I said. We're going to hold the soldering iron right here and we're just going to touch that until it starts to feed the solder into the wires. And once it does that, sorry, it's a lot harder to film and do this because I can't be in the way. But once it starts to feed it into the wires, you can just feed the solder in from the top and it will pull it all the way through those wires and you want to kind of pull off any of these little sharp edges that come off down here and they should run off pretty easy with the, the solder. Now this doesn't look like it's flowed quite as well as it should so I'll give it a little more heat to just kind of help draw that solder all the way down into the wires. Uh, because you should kind of be able to see the form of the wires on the outside and like tell the solder is all the way down inside of them. So, being a little bit of a pain. Okay, so now this solder joint is it's pretty much cooled down now, but it's a, it's a strong, solid electrical connection as well as a, uh, as a physical connection. Now let me turn this light off so we can maybe get a better look at this here, sorry. Okay, there you can see it's a good solid joint. I'll be honest, I've had some better looking ones, but this one is nice and strong and it's not going to come apart. Uh, that is a good solder joint. So next we'll take our heat shrink and we'll put it over this and shrink that down in to uh, complete the joint. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take this heat shrink and we'll slide it on. Uh, as I said, it would already be slid on for you, but in this case, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to slide it on afterwards. But you want to take it and it should slide over the the joint and then we're going to 
set it back inside of its grips here and our soldering gun we've changed the tips out now it's a heat gun or a soldering iron is now a heat gun uh, we'll just as you heat this up that heat shrink is going to shriek, shrink down across or sorry around the joint and the wire and this heat shrink has a uh, an adhesive on the inside lining so when it shrinks down that adhesive gets hot and uh, kind of sticky and gooey and it seals it up nice and tight and you can tell by looking at the ends you'll see a little bit of that adhesive come out you can see a little bit right there but at that point this is a fully soldered and sealed joint repaired uh, wire or wire put back together um, sorry we had a little focusing issues right there I never thought it'd be so hard to to focus a camera on a piece of wire now let's uh, look at the other method uh, of putting wires together okay so like I said before the best way to put wires together is going to be to solder and heat shrink them uh, it's a good solid long-lasting repair that will outlast the wire if it's done correctly but we also live in the real world and if you're trying to fix your own car you may not be able to afford to run out and buy a soldering iron or you know a soldering iron the solder and everything you need uh, it may not be feasible for you. You may just need to get something done quick and simple and maybe you're going to come back and do it, you know, solder it later, but you need to get something put together now. If that's the case and you're going to use a crimp joint, I'm going to walk through some of the steps that uh, you want to take to make sure that you do that repair as correct as possible. And the very first thing you want to know is to use the correct kind of joint not just the right size but let me see if I can get this to focus here these joints are very much like the joint we just did in the fact that this outside uh, housing or the the tube that it's in is actually heat shrink so after you strip the wires and you put them in and you crimp them you heat this up and it will seal down across those wires and it will create a weather tight seal just like we did with the heat shrink it's still not perfect it's still not soldered but it's a whole lot better than the kind that just leave it open on the end so let's look at how we're going to do that okay so we've got our two wires here that we're going to use get that piece off of there uh, and we're going to strip off about the same half inch maybe even a little less with these because they're uh, they don't require so much oh I was kind of out of frame there they don't require so much uh, coming off so we're gonna strip off that and off of this one and you just need enough because when it goes down inside of here it's gonna you want it to kind of get to the where the wire bottoms out but the insulation goes right up to the end of where that joints at and you don't have to but I like to kinda twist these to make them a little more firm and solid when they go in and you'll find the size on here that corresponds to the wire that you're crimping uh, this top one in this case is 10 to 16 gauge and that's what this is going to be is uh, this crimp is actually for 14 to 16 gauge which falls into that category now I will always try to get it set in place on one side of these whenever I have to use it and then insert the wire and crimp it now before you crimp it understand these are a one crimp thing you don't go and crimp and then try to close it up a little bit more by crimping the other way one time that's all you do is one good crimp and you'll you'll feel and hear the wires kind of shift around and get crushed in there a bit and then that side is in and then we're going to take the other wire or the other side and we're going to get set up on the other side just like we did before I'm going to take 
these wires, this wire, and we're going to stick it down in there. And we're going to do the same thing. One crimp, good, solid crimp, and that's it. We're not going to go back and try to do a second crimp. Now, the weakness to these, even though this is the better option, is this point right here where it's crimped in, well, some, well sometimes they'll break. When you crimp that down, it'll break the uh, heat shrink right there sometimes, even if you're super, super careful. It's one of the inherent weaknesses of this, meaning that you still have the possibility of corrosion, water, whatever, getting in there. But let's take our soldering gun or soldering iron slash heat gun, nice and getting hot, and this is the benefit to these is that as they let me try to get it focused on there before we do it they will shrink down just like the heat shrink on the repair we did with the solder and that's what you want to do is shrink these down and they'll close up around the wire just like the heat shrink did they'll turn a lot kind of shinier clearer color well, the same color, but it'll be a little shinier and clearer. And you'll see them seal up against the wire. And even in these areas where you crimped it, you'll want to heat it. Because any of that glue that's on the inside will help seal up any, uh, any holes. Sorry, lost my concentration there for a moment. Uh, and that is a, uh, a crimp done the most correct way possible. It's not my preferred method. It's not the best option, but sometimes you got to do it. So this is how to do it the most correct way you can. Okay, so I know I'm probably going to catch a lot of, you know, crap for going and showing the method for using those crimp joints like that. Like I said, it's not my preferred method. I don't like to do it. I've had to do it before. Uh, but the simple fact is, there's people out there that aren't always going to be able to solder it or they don't have the means to solder it. Uh, I'm trying to help people uh, repair their vehicles as best as they can uh, within the means that they have available and sometimes those crimp joints are just they're the only thing that people are going to be able to do so I might as well show them how to do it as right as possible so uh, I hope you learned something from this video uh, I hope you like the way I uh, solder if you don't I'm sure you're gonna let me know that's fine uh, if you do feel free to let me know as well so uh, thank you for being a part of this and uh, feel free to subscribe and watch some of the other videos we have here on the channel uh, and I will see you next time.